Hey everybody, this is Deus, and we are playing Loop Hero yet again. And I've been playing this a little bit off stream, and stream, I'm not streaming, off video. And uh, I've kind of changed my verdict. This is, this is a fantastic game. I never said it was a bad game before, but I said I was not completely sold on it. But the more I've played it, it definitely has grown on me. And it's really clear this has become, you know, this is becoming, you know, one of those sort of sleeper hits. Um, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's playing it. If you haven't, check it out. It is really cool. And maybe I'll get a little bit more into those details about why. But um, first, some updates. <clears throat> Since I was playing off camera, I added a couple things to my camp. These are um, watch towers which will basically add crossbowmen to your camp on the loop, and they will do damage on fights around that area, around the, ti the tiles around your camp, will automatically um, have some archers that help them out. So um, that's actually good for the boss. Um, and actually, last time I was playing, I accidentally... Um, spawn the boss and ended up fighting him and lost so i still have not beat the lich but we're going to try that now and i actually have an idea um since i've been playing around and thinking about this so let's go ahead and jump into an expedition take a look at our deck one thing we also unlocked was this ancestral crypt which is basically like a resurrection uh, a lot of roguelikes will have uh, something like that where you get to resurrect your hero once during it so we're, we'll go ahead and hold on to it it does um we'll keep it on our deck it does remove health bonuses from armor i'm not sure you know how detrimental that is additionally i have now that i have the desert card which lowers all creatures e um, health even your own um but again i'm going to keep those in so i'm i have i have an idea and one of those ideas is the chrono crystals because they double the effects of a day passing. So if I can make those combo with the meadow to heal my HP, it'll double the effect of the meadow. Um, and I want to also try to always create blooming meadows, so only place these down next to other objects. So that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, and we're, I think this is, we're going to keep pretty much the standard stuff we had in there before for monsters we're going to fight vampires skeletons and we will try to spawn the um the ghouls in the villages by putting those next to our vampire mansions so let's go ahead and give that a go so we have 12 cards in our deck and we are going to play with the warrior since he's uh providing the best of luck to us even though we haven't won yet so we're just going to let this go. Oh, we need to put our crypt down somewhere. I never know where to put it. It's kind of just a useless little building, to be honest. So we'll just go ahead and let this run a few times. Around the loop, around the loop. At least wait until we have a handful of cards to do anything significant here. So, and... and and so this is this is why I've changed my mind on this game. This whole thing that I'm trying, you know, by combining the the meadows with um, the crystal shards, you know, those kind of interactions that you kind of that you need to experiment with. You need to you need to um, they make the player feel clever. They make the player feel like they're smart in a sense, you know. They give them this opportunity to have those aha moments. And that's I think that's really great in games. I love when that happens. Alright, let's see. Put a rock here and put a mountain here. Sand dunes. Just get some of these cards out of our hand for the moment. Let's see. Battlefield. Um, battlefield, battlefield. Where do we want that? We want it to spawn chests. And that's fine, I think. And then we're going to want some groves. We're going to put some groves near our camp. Mainly to um, so we can put some blood groves down, which will help us fight the boss. And I think... Um, 
think right here would be best. Yeah, we'll do it right there. And then our meadow. Just go ahead and put this meadow up here. And let it run. Yeah, so... This game has a lot of sort of discovery. And I hope that lasts for a while. You know, I don't know how long that's going to last. I don't know how much sort of content is in the game. But I do like that that element of discovery. And it's, and it's mostly with sort of the placement of tiles and the interaction to have there. Additionally, there are some sort of um, character, uh, you know, traits and abilities that you have to think about as well if you're playing with like the rogue or the necromancer. There's a little bit more, uh, there's some other synergies going on there that you could play with as well. Um, I've also found some interesting ways to change tiles into other things. Uh, sort of like how you can change, um, how you can change villages into, I think it's a ransacked village by putting it near a vampire mansion. Um, there are ways to change other things as well, similarly to that, that I've figured out. And if I do them, I do them, but I'm not going to call them out. I don't want to spoil it because, again, that's what I, you know, that's one of the fun parts. Um, where do we want to put this treasury? Let me see. Put a treasury here. I can't put a piece there. But I can still surround it if I put things here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to maximize my tile placement right now. That's kind of what I'm doing. Uh, let me try this. This might be a bad idea. But we'll see. And then... Go ahead and put... This guy somewhere over here is this like i'm i'm taking so much time because i'm trying to think like you know 20 steps ahead without having the cards in my hand to put them down it's hard to think about where you're gonna want everything because i mainly want to block off all these tiles here so that the lich can't spawn his palace which help, which makes him stronger. So you want to prevent him from doing that, for starters. And I also want to try and have some fights here because I have my archers from those um, towers that I built in my camp. So what we could do, I think we can place this here. And if we get a vampire mansion, we'll want to turn that into a ransacked town. And let's go ahead and upgrade our armor here. I don't think there's anything else here worth looking at. We have a quest over here. I'm looking for a vampire mansion. I'm looking for a blood grove. That's the cards I want to draw. Mountains and meadows are good, too. I'll take them. Though I have noticed that these runs can go pretty long, like 30 or 40 minutes. So I might cut this into smaller pieces. Um... Okay, so I think this is what I want to do. I think I want to put this here. And this here. Right? Okay. And hopefully we'll get another one. But then I can put my meadows around here. And my meadows should get a double effect. We'll see. That's my idea. We're experimenting here. Let me go ahead and open up my resources. I like to see what I'm getting. I don't know why. It just makes me feel good. Um, should I get any of these? I don't think so. Or 
you know, it's not, it's usually not very useful looking, even looking at the loot until you're on, you know, loop four or five. At least at this point in the game, once you've sort of grinded, grind a little bit and got more cards and buffed yourself up, built some stuff in your camp, then the beginning is a little repetitive, just like most roguelikes. I've probably mentioned it before. Hold on, let's pause. We got an awesome armor here. Go ahead and pop that on. Uh, we'll definitely upgrade our weapon. Jeez, why didn't I do that earlier? Um, and we regen per second. We'll go with that. That's fine. And so now, hold on. Let's look at this. So the meadow heals 2 HP at the start of each day. So I'm getting 16 per day right now. So if I put this meadow down near, within this radius, it should give me, well, if I put it next to this guy, it'll turn into a blooming meadow, which gives me 3 HP each day. If you double that, that's 6 HP every day. So that'll be 16 plus 6. So that'll give us, 22. So if this goes up to 22, then my experiment works. It did. Nice. Okay, so that's how those work. So this is going to double the effect of my, my meadows. That's great. Okay, now let's put this down here. This will help us with any fights in this area. <clears throat> Oh, and just to mention, actually, I'll show you next, once we get to the next battle. Um, we're going to do... Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to create a blood path here. Um, but you see up here, uh, withering, all creatures' HP is lowered by 5%. And that goes for everybody. And that's because, I'm pretty sure that's because of the, um, the deserts. Another grove. Where do we want it? Just gonna put another meadow over here. So unfortunately we can't put meadows in this spot, so we're gonna have to get another crystal or something else to go in that spot in order to surround the treasury. So I don't know if that was the best placement of tiles, but shoe nails, what do they do? Attackers receive one damage after every hit. Eh, okay. It does that go for me too? So every time I hit something, I take damage as well? I'm not sure how you would use that. That sounds terrible then. Oh, maybe the Necromancer, because he doesn't actually hit anybody. Does he? I don't think the Necromancer attacks. The skeletons attack for him. So, I'm thinking... Yes. Oh, look, we got this. So this can go here. Is that a waste? Because it's overlapping all that? I wonder if they, um... I wonder if it, it uh, doubles the effect. I'm not sure. We didn't check. 28? It went from... I don't know. Alright, where do we want these next meadows? Yeah. Just... Oh! That was a misclick. Oh well. It happens. <laughs> I actually misclick in this game a lot, especially placing tiles. My mouse is also being annoying. <laughs> well, alright, finally a vampire mansion. Okay. And a village. Alright, let's think about this. Vampire mansion can go here. Right? And we will get vampires over here. We will get a ransacked village. Oh, will we? No, I think you need to put the village down after vampire mansion so i think we just messed that up i don't think this will be a ransacked village yet okay what if we oblivion it and then put another one on do we want to do that why would you ever do that well, all right while we're thinking about that let's go ahead and make our mountain because we have another village we definitely want a ransacked village um, especially this early on, we want a ransacked village. Because it takes three loops before it becomes something better. Hmm. 
think we messed up. Or do we just take out this grove? Yeah, let's do that. And then it... Does it become a ransacked village? No, it doesn't. Maybe that happens over time. So maybe we didn't have to do that. Let's see. Hmm, I'm a little confused. A little bit. Is it the... Maybe it's the fields. That change. See, I could be totally wrong. Now this game makes me feel stupid. New armor. Don't think we want it. And some mountains. Some meadows. Put a meadow right here. Yeah, that's fine. We do have another grove. Can place that up here. And our next meadow. We will place here. Cool. So we are getting almost 40 HP per day just from these few meadows. And these are our archers that are going to help us fight when we're near our camp. It's pretty cool. And I think you can have up to four of them. You just have to build the buildings. You have to spend the resources to build it. I've only built two. That's why we have two archers. And I was watching a video of this game on my phone earlier today. I was just looking at the UI and thinking, you know what? This might work on mobile. I know how everybody's like, put this game on mobile, put that game on mobile. It's really hard to do. It's really expensive for developers to do that as well. And so a lot of them end up either being bad or not being supported. They just don't happen. But I think this one would work. And I do think that... You know, still, even still, a lot of the mobile space is sorely missing some great games, and I think this would be a good one. I think this one would work, especially just because of the, the auto combat, and you're just you're just dragging tiles and placing them down. There's obviously going to be some issues with, you know, UI and cramped space, but I think they can solve those. I think all of that's pretty solvable. We have a lot going on down by our camp. There are a lot of monsters, and we don't have much health. So I think this might end our run. Let me see. Ring. Regen. I think I'd rather have the regen right now. <laughs> Damage to all. And then we have a trait. Alright, so we can reroll. Uh, we can get half times loop HP for an adjacent roadside tile while passing a tile. I don't understand this one. I think I said that last time. I feel like we should just try it one time and figure out what it is. Shield Master, 10% chance upon hit of stunning target for one second. Um, let's re-roll, because I was hoping for something better. That's okay. Um, what's our counter? 8%, not that great. Um, evade, what's our evasion? None. All right, we're just gonna go with battering ram. I don't, you know, it doesn't help us. So I, I think we're gonna die. I mean, you see all this craziness going on down here. We could nuke one of these tiles. 
with Oblivion. And that might help us. That's a thought. Okay, let's see how we do once we get down there. Alright. Got more defense. Let's go ahead and add that. And then this one is going to give us... Uh, let's see, regen per second. Our regen goes down a lot because of that. But we get more counter and more evasion. I'd rather have the regen at the moment. Um, that probably wasn't smart to do. So I think we're going to Oblivion this tile right now. Oh! And now, because there's no grove next to the Blood Grove, it's become a Hungry Grove. A Blood Grove that has lost its connection with the forest in constant agony because of its irrational existence. Occasionally attacks the hero. Whoa, 20 damage. Okay. Devours enemies that have less than 20 HP left. Oh, so it's act it's better. The effect is better than a Blood Grove, but it can hurt you occasionally. What? See, I don't know what occasionally means. Is occasionally like, yeah, 10% occasionally or 50% occasionally, you know? It would be nice to know. Is that, that would be significant. So if we survive this, um, once we get to camp, I think we're going to end there. And then we're going to pick up this run next episode. So we'll see what happens. And obviously if we die, we'll just end there. But yeah, he got a couple good hits on us. Um, let's see, that can go there. Alright, so now... Oh, and we have another goblin coming. So we're going to have at least two more battles. If we survive this one. Come on. There we go. And no mimics, which is good. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. We just got a bunch of stuff. Let me see. Pause the game. Pause everything. Let's see... No, no, we're good. I think we're good. Uh, do we want to put a meadow down? We don't have anywhere to put it right now, really. I mean, I guess we could put it up here. So I want to put it next to another object so that it becomes a blooming meadow. Now, if I put this down, let's see how far our health goes down. We're at 173, 505. 173, 500. Yeah, so it drops our max down to uh, by five. Uh, a vampire mansion. Where are we going to put the vampire mansion? Well, let's think about that next episode. Because we just made it back to camp. We survived. We are at 400 of 503 health. So we've done pretty good. We have a legendary level five sword. Which is going to give us more regen and evasion. So I don't know if we're going to put that on though. Because our axe is doing... A hefty amount of damage right now but anyways i think we're gonna call it quits right here right now i'll leave the game running and come back to it in the next episode so thank you guys for watching like subscribe and have a great day bye